Hi, I'm Dylan Paris. I run a whole YouTube channel off of an iPad Pro, specifically this iPad Pro, the 2020 12.9 inch model with 256 gigs of storage and six gigs of RAM. It's rocking the A12Z processor, I believe, which is near the top of the line, but not quite top of the line anymore. But that's okay because this machine is a beast. And the way I'm able to do all of this is with two specific apps. The most important is LumaFusion, this app right here. I edit all of my videos in LumaFusion. I've definitely used other machines before on this channel, but for at least the last month, if not longer, probably two or three, everything has been done in LumaFusion on this iPad. For my thumbnails, I export just a screen from the video, usually. I then open that screenshot in the app Procreate and create a finalized thumbnail. Or I take a photo using the same camera I film my videos with, the Panasonic Lumix G85. The cheaper, less advanced brother of the GH5 and the more expensive, more advanced brother of the G7, I believe. This camera is a workhorse. For what I do, it is perfect. There are some cons, primarily the autofocus. I used a Sony RX100 Mark V for a little while, I think the Mark V-A. It was a much better autofocus system, but much worse at 4K long form capture, which is what I use this thing for all the time. To make these videos possible, I record on this camera, both the video and any thumbnails I wanna take pictures of. I then use this USB-C hub adapter thing. It has USB-C, three different USB-A ports, two of which are 3.0, uh, Ethernet, which I never use, and then SD and micro SD, which I use every time I make a video. For SD, I'm getting my video capture off of this camera. For micro SD, I'm getting the audio off of my recorder. I don't always use an audio recorder, but if I'm going to talk during a video, I use my Zoom H1 handy recorder with a really cheap lapel mic. This sounds so much better than what comes out of this, primarily because of room tone and because of just overall audio quality. So once I get all the files off of the camera and the recorder, through this guy, I get them onto the iPad. On the iPad, I use the Files app, seen right here. This is a huge step up from what was available even about three years ago. Before they really forked into iPad OS, and before they advanced the file system, it was way more cumbersome to get video files onto the machine and edit them. But over the last two years, they've really upped the game and the quality of this device. And now, using the Magic Keyboard or just Touch and using the file system, I'm able to access files and edit them in a way that feels very similar to something like a Mac or a PC with the added benefits of the power of this machine, which we'll get into soon. So here, I just go to LumaFusion, go to User Media, Shared, and here I just drag all of my files directly into this folder, either from the Lumix or from the Handy Recorder. Or if I'm, like I'm doing now, recording my screen, using the built-in recorder. I then drag the recording from the Photos app into this folder as well. Once I've consolidated my media, I then go back into LumaFusion. In LumaFusion, I then go to the shared folder and everything I just showed you in files is here. Then I can simply drag and drop clips into the timeline, which I'm not gonna do here, but it's how I made this video. I have a few different types of videos, talking head ones like this, and then performance videos, where I just film myself making something from scratch on a synth, an iPad, a groove box, lots of different things. And then I just trim them down for time into a more interesting video. I don't usually leave the entire composition. Sometimes those are 45 minutes. This video, for example, was 30 minutes, edited down to about 16. Once I have my edit done, which I do by combining the audio recorded from the recorder, in the case of a synth video, and the video shot on the camera, I have to sync them manually. Now, this is a little frustrating frustrating and it's something you don't have to do in an app like Final Cut. Final Cut, which I used to use on a MacBook Pro, would auto-sync audio and video recordings and it was amazing. That's not yet in LumaFusion. Maybe it will be by the time you watch this video. A lot of stuff that used to not be in LumaFusion now is. But yes, I get my edit done after consolidating the video and the audio, usually just muting the audio that comes out of this camera because it's butt. And then once I have an edit, for videos like this, I actually like to add titles throughout describing what I'm doing for the viewer. Not everyone actually cares or reads these, but they're a nice way to get the viewer, you know, involved in the process and not understand what I'm doing when I'm hitting buttons. I did not originate this concept. This is a very, very popular way of making videos. Red Means Recording is a great example of someone who's been doing this for a very long time. But yes, that's an example of a synth video. If I were to go to my projects folder, normally I purge all my projects. You shouldn't do what I do. As I learned in film school, you should export and back up all your stuff. But what I do for most of these 
is upload them directly to YouTube and then delete the video off the iPad because I only have 256 gigs of storage. Because of that, I don't normally keep a lot of projects on here, but I kept a couple just to show you different examples of the kinds of videos I do. Here is an example of a video, a video I put out that was a beat made on the MC-707 and very inspired by The Mandalorian. I don't actually sample The Mandalorian because I'm very scared of Disney's copyright hammer, but I use tones and sounds similar to the stuff that Ludwig Göransson is using, or Ludwig Göransson is using in the soundtrack for Mando. So in this video, if we go out of the project window, we can see that I had two capture sources. I actually used the front facing camera of this iPad to record myself and then this camera, the Lumix, to capture shots of the synth. The Lumix is recording in 4K, which is great because it means I can get this zoomed out master shot and then crop into it so that my video is still crispy even if I'm zoomed in. This video is much less crispy. It's a front facing recording. I don't know what the resolution is, but through a bad combination of ISO, image quality, sensor quality, what have you, this video here is much less aesthetically pleasing than the video on the Lumix. Someday, I will probably have multiple cameras like the Lumix, but I try to use what I have and not buy too many things for this channel that are unnecessary. The channel is finally making a little bit of ad revenue, so shout out to all of you who watch ads, but also I understand if you don't, it's all good. But as that continues to grow, I will use that money to reinvest in the channel and probably get a secondary camera and maybe more gear to record with. But yeah, it's a really great application. Um, making the titles is very simple. You hit the plus button, overlay title, and then you go here and you can edit the text of it in this little editor uh, using your keyboard. You can then <laughs> take your title and change the font. Let's say Futura. And then if you wanted to, you could even have a shadow under it, which I do sometimes. And then you can choose a color for that shadow, like this gaudy <laughs> mustard color and you can change the distance, etc., and then create some basic titles. Uh, this one's bad, so we're gonna delete it. Cutting is super simple. Um, if you have nothing selected, hitting the cut button. It's a dog. I live in an apartment building. It's great. Command B is blade. So it'll cut whatever's selected, or it will cut everything under it if nothing is selected. So Command Z, Command B, and these are also touch accessible as well, but there's a benefit to having the keyboard and the mouse. I use both. I don't always use the keyboard. Sometimes I just hold it in tablet mode and just do my editing on the screen with Apple Pencil or just with my hands. And yeah, let's uh, undo is also up here if you don't want to hit commands. Once my video is done, I export movie directly to YouTube. I have it set to unlisted. Here at the bottom at privacy, I have it set to unlisted so that I can change the thumbnail, change the title and description, add an end screen, etc., up in YouTube before I schedule it for release. But yeah, that's the side here. And then if I wanted to get a thumbnail from the video itself, I could hit export snapshot. It would write a snapshot directly to my photos. And then the next step would just be to open that photo in Procreate. So now the video thumbnail is in Procreate and it is a 4K image. So I actually work in this space first and then I shrink it down to 1280 by 720, which is YouTube's preferred thumbnail size. So for this one, what I might do is get the pencil, create a new layer, get a color that will show over here. Make sure I'm on a tool I like, such as sketching, Actually, inking Studio Pen is my favorite. And I would normally do this on a table, but let's try it here. And just say, Mando Beat. That's not great. That's not what I actually ended up doing for this one, but it's a start. Then I would go to settings here, the wrench, canvas, crop and resize, settings again, resample canvas, 1280, and it'll automatically make the other dimension 720. And now I have a YouTube preferred dimension image for my thumbnail. Um, and you can see I've, I've done a lot of thumbnails here. Even if I do some of the work outside of Procreate, it almost always ends up in Procreate. Here's one where I did a versus video of the MC707 and the Machina Mark III. 
And you can see the layers here. I did a sketch around myself. I did different layering on the images together, both of which were just shots from the video that I took. And then I did the font work by hand and inserted a video of myself or an image of myself, which looks really bad until you outline it. And then it looks cool, I hope. Once that's done, same export process. I just throw them into either photos or sometimes I'm smarter and I put them into a folder on the iPad called thumbnails. If you were trying to consolidate and keep track of everything, thumbnails or some kind of folder like that, which I created, which uh, is very easy to do. Just at the main folder, create a folder, call it thumbnails, you know, that simple. I'm gonna delete this, I already have one, but yes. Here you can see many thumbnails. There's my toss a coin remix. Videos like this, thumbnails like this were actually probably made somewhere like Affinity Photo. So if I go to Affinity Photo, I use it enough that I have a quick shortcut. Here you can see some of my more complex layered thumbnails. So the Mando one, I took a screenshot of the MC707 and a screenshot from the Mandalorian. And then I just changed the blending mode. So this was Lighten and then I set the opacity and together they create a really cool looking unique image. I forget how to undo in this one, I'm hoping. There we go, two fingers, three fingers is pretty universal now for undo, redo. Shouts to Procreate, I think, for originating that. But yeah, it is a great tool and it's so portable and then it can become a laptop and then fold up into a pretty heavy but totally portable device. Unfold it, use Face ID to get back in which is cool, and you're good to go. Probably stopped recording at some point when I turned it off. But yes, I highly recommend this workflow. I found myself having both a MacBook Pro and an iPad Pro and realizing I really didn't need both devices. The MacBook Pro was about $2,500, and this was 12-ish, maybe a little bit more than that, maybe 14, all things considered. I bought this before the iPad Air came out. To my understanding, the iPad Air can do pretty much all of this. It can work with the Magic Keyboard. It can work with the Apple Pencil 2. It is a smaller screen, it's 11 inches, and it has slightly thicker bezels. It doesn't have 120 hertz, which you may notice when you're drawing, but really shouldn't be an issue for video editing. The RAM is also lower, but I was able to edit 4K video on an iPad 2018, the just the $300 one. At least a couple of streams of video was fine. I had an iPad mini for a bit, and that struggled specifically with the screen recorder. For me, the screen recorder is essential. Anytime I make a video where I'm using an app like Beatmaker 3 or Core Gadget, I'm just screen recording the screen, which also captures the audio. So that is a huge part of the video making process. And because of that, I like the pro models as they seem to struggle less with screen recording and doing tasks. But yeah, uh, that's how I use the iPad Pro to run my YouTube channel. I, I think it's a great workflow. And until the newest M1 MacBooks came out, I felt like this was clearly the most obvious value proposition for video editing. You can make an argument that still is. If you got something like an iPad Air, and LumaFusion, which I think is a one-time $30 purchase, which is crazy. You would have everything you need to get started with a YouTube channel. Whereas uh, MacBook, even the Air starts at a thousand and then you need an app. You could use iMovie, but I don't really like iMovie. I really like Final Cut and that runs really well on the M1 chip. So you could use Final Cut. That was a, I think a $200 standalone app. Although there's like a student deal that I got that included Logic and some other stuff, even though I, I never really use Logic or the other stuff. I don't even have a Mac anymore, so I don't use any of those apps. And maybe someday Final Cut will come to the iPad, but for now, I've got LumaFusion, and there's a really good chance that by the time Final Cut comes to the iPad, LumaFusion will be so advanced that it may not even really be necessary to go Final Cut versus LumaFusion, but who knows? I'm excited about the future. I really enjoy this workflow, and I do recommend it. Uh, if you're interested in starting a YouTube channel, this is a really cool way to do it for relatively cheap. All right, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.